Hi everybody! We're doing something a little different today, as you might be able to tell. I'm looking really YouTuber-ish here with my microphone and a background. I've got my creepy dollhouse because today I'm going to be reacting to a creepy dollhouse in mainstream media. I've had this idea for a while and I'm super excited to try it out, see how it goes. Today I'm going to be watching an episode from Doctor Who. It is from season 6, episode 9, called Night Terrors. What I know from this episode is that it takes place in a dollhouse. Disclaimer, I have seen this episode before, but it has been so long that I remember very little about it. I do remember there is one point in the episode where it clicked in my brain that they were inside of a dollhouse. So I'm hoping to really look into the aspects that the set designers had to undertake in order to make the set look like it was a dollhouse. So I'm going to put my headphones on here. I don't have a script. I don't really know how to do this because usually, obviously, I'm making things. I don't make videos like this very often, but I think it'll be fun. And if this works out, maybe I can react to more dollhouses in other movies and TV shows. I'm not going to be showing a lot of the episode because I don't want to get a copyright strike, but I might be showing some screenshots or maybe even little clips to kind of tell you what I'm talking about. Also, there will probably be spoilers. Spoiners. Without further ado, I'm going to jump into watching this episode, and whenever I have something to say, I'm going to stop and talk about it. So, here we go. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> in order to tell you about what's going on here, I first need to introduce you to the characters. There's, of course, the Doctor here in the center, Amy Pond, who I refer to as both Amy and Pond, and Rory, who is Amy's boyfriend. Also, the entire episode is set around this eight-year-old boy named George. He's the whole reason all of this is happening. He also has a mom who leaves for a night shift at the beginning of the episode and comes back at the end. And then there's dad whose face looks like this throughout most of the episode. There are also two other residents that we get to meet, an elderly neighbor and a landlord. The episode starts out in an apartment building and it kind of zooms in on a little kid who is obviously afraid of something. The child tells the mother to flip the light switch on and off five times. He also says he's scared of something and the mother says, you know what we do with things we're scared of? We put them in the cupboard. Mom and dad are really worried about their son and the dad says he needs a doctor. Suddenly there's like some kind of space magic and the doctor gets a message that someone is in need of his services. Please save me from the monsters. After the doctor and his two companions make it to the apartment building, the doctor says we're going to one of the scariest places on earth, a child's bedroom. Setting up for some terror, I see. While the two companions, Pond and Rory, are helping the doctor look for this child that sent this message out into the universe, they enter an elevator and suddenly just start dropping super fast. And it did surprise me. I, I didn't remember this part at all. Earlier they had been near the child's window, so the child had been afraid of them. And what do we do with things we are afraid of? So, let's continue. After a few other scenes, Pond and Rory wake up in a much echoier space. They're no longer in an elevator, and you can really hear the floorboards like clicking or like it's very hollow. It sounds very big and hollow. Everything is really dark and you just kind of see the hint of some doors, some architecture, and as they're walking through trying to figure out what's going on, you see a tiny little figure cross in the background through a long hallway. As they're walking into the first room that's noticeable as a room, you can tell it's a kitchen because there is a wood table with a pot. The pot looks pretty normal. However, the handle is extremely long for a typical pot. So that's kind of the first hint that maybe we're not in reality, but I still think so far, if you weren't aware that this was about to take place in a dollhouse, you wouldn't be clued in yet. Pretty shortly after that, Amy picked, Amy is also pond, by the way. Amy picks up the pot that I just mentioned and knocks on it and realizes that it's not metal, it's wood that's just painted like metal. A little reference to the fact that dollhouses often use materials and force them to look like another material. A very good reference by the set designers and the writers. 
Okay, we finally got to the very first item that I realized they're in a dollhouse, and it's a lantern that Amy picks up. It is way too large for her, which there can be large lanterns, so that itself is not quite weird enough. However, the fake candle that's within it is very kid-like. It's very, it's like got a big chunky center and a big chunky plastic light bulb, and I'm pretty sure this is the moment that I knew they were in a dollhouse. I think these first two items that they've picked up have been the perfect way for them to start introducing the idea that they are no longer in reality, they are in some kind of child's toy. Also, the lantern gives off almost no light. <laughs> okay. They just opened a drawer in the kitchen, and when they opened it, there was a gigantic eyeball in the drawer, which, if you're a miniaturist and you have miniatures, you know that you just kind of stuff things wherever because they're tiny and they fit, and so there could be just anything sitting inside of a dollhouse drawer. So I think that was, it was a good scare. It was also great for uh, being along the lines of what we now know. Oh, they touched it. <laughs> it's glass. While Amy and Rory are inside the dollhouse, the doctor is talking to the little kid, and soon he finds out that it's the cupboard that he's really scared of. I really actually feel for this little eight-year-old boy because I myself have an eight-year-old son, and so I know firsthand how paralyzing these fears can be for children just little things where we as adults are like that's silly like that doesn't make any sense and sometimes we can get frustrated but you know it's scary when you're young and you don't really understand how the world works which is another reason why i think dolls doll houses children all of these are common tropes in terror or horror movies because they are so innocent or they're supposed to be so innocent so it's that much easier to turn them into something terrifying when you take that innocence out of that item it's so so dark in this dollhouse i cannot see any of the details but i'm wondering if that was kind of a choice made by the director so that they really didn't have to make a full dollhouse set because they could really just film it anywhere inside of a house but if they had too much light on it maybe you could really tell that it was a real house and you couldn't hide as many of those factors so but i turned the brightness up so hopefully i can see a little bit more after I was done filming, I found this video where they talked about how this was inside of an actual house, it wasn't a soundstage, and they talk about the steps they took to make it look more like a child's toy. While Amy and Rory are still in the dollhouse, the doctor is doing a really good job trying to comfort the little boy. However, you're starting to figure out that the boy's fears are really realistic. He's more afraid of the people in the apartment building, not his parents, but the people around him, the landlord, and the doctor's trying to figure out what's going on. At this point, he tries to open the cupboard where we put everything that we're afraid of, and the sonic screwdriver alerts him to whatever it is, is off the charts. So while there are real fears going on in this little boy's life, there's also really something strange going on with the cupboard. And as we know, we know. We don't know yet in the episode, but Rory and Amy are actually in the cupboard. <laughs> okay, so they just got to a door and there's a lock on it and it's huge. It's way oversized and Rory remarks that there is no doorknob. Also, the doors are gigantic and there is a little candelabra sitting on the ground and it's such a common dollhouse candelabra. Let me see if I can... I know I have one. There's at least two in the Adams Family House. Hold on, let me grab, let me see if I can find one because it's such a common design for a dollhouse candelabra and it's sitting right on the floor and I totally recognized it immediately. The ones that are similar to the one in the video, I think I just glued my last one down to something else, but I have a little one here, which is fairly similar. However, they're usually brass. So this is kind of a rare one for it to be more of a silver color, but I just really love that detail. It's so common to see a candelabra in a dollhouse. Amy also just noticed that the grandfather clock hands are painted on, which is also very common because they're so, they'll end up being so tiny in any scale that sometimes it's easier just to paint them on and not worry about gluing on something that small. 
So at this point, I think pretty much everyone has probably figured out that they are in a dollhouse. However, the lights are still very dark and I think I just heard a little innocent giggle from the background. So I think it's about to get a little scarier. Yep. Another side story that's going on is that there's an older lady that's in the apartment complex and she seems to breathe pretty heavily and that's been scaring the little boy as she's walked by his windows. She has now also been sucked into this dollhouse. The first time we see her is in this hallway, which I love the detail that I'm going to point out here that makes it very much look like a dollhouse. You can see the edge of the wallpaper. Typically in normal houses, you would have the wallpaper go around most corners, but it's very common in dollhouses to just cut out the wallpaper around a window. And if you don't finish that window edge, you will see the edge of the wallpaper. So I'm loving seeing that detail here. It still is giving very much dollhouse vibes. So great job to the set designers here for just continuing to add those little bitty tiny details that are bringing everything to reality, I guess. Sorry, I'm all like, I realize I'm all like tensed up. There's a scene where Amy and Rory are getting closer and closer to a door in order to open it. They're hearing giggling and laughing behind the door. And everything that I see here is looking very real life-like. So I know there's probably limitations. They're not going to just build an entire out of scale set. Um, but if this was a dollhouse, then I would be really impressed with the amount of details and the amount of little bits they put in on the trim. Um, so this is looking very real life. It's not looking so much dollhouse at this point, but the lights are still off. So it's kind of hard to see. Oh, and we met our first doll. Okay. They just met their first doll. It's just kind of standing behind this door. And I must say, I have never seen dollhouse dolls like this before. So if you have, if you've seen something, maybe a historical doll that looks like this, there are some very classic dollhouse dolls out there, but I, this is very specific to Doctor Who, I think. However, let me know if you've seen another doll that's like this. After filming this video, I wanted to do a little bit more research on the dolls themselves. And I looked up peg dolls and got exactly what I was envisioning. These are the peg dolls I think of that don't have any arms or legs. However, I knew it just had to be referencing something, Pretty quickly, I found this Wikipedia page on Peg Wooden Doll, also known as Dutch dolls, which seem to be from Germany. These dolls were sold undressed and children would make their clothing from scraps of fabric. So this explains why they were wood. I don't think they're as creepy as they made them look in the Doctor Who episode, but it does make sense why it looks like their faces were cracking or bits of paint were coming off. However, I do imagine if it was life-size and walking towards me in a dark dollhouse, that would be a little bit more scary. Let me know if you grew up with peg dolls or if you have any peg dolls or you have any around that belong to anyone you know. I'm definitely going to keep my eyes open at antique stores for these. I do think they're really cool and a fun part of dollhouse history. So I had mentioned that the son was scared of the landlord. So we get a glimpse into the landlord's apartment and suddenly he's kind of being like sucked down into the carpet. And at this point we know he's going to be pulled into this dollhouse or into the cupboard because the little boy is scared of him. And I laughed because his dog is just sitting there and the dog just does not care that his owner is getting sucked through the floor. <laughs> he does not care at all. Okay, the doctor just got the cupboard open. It was quite a lot of suspense leading up to it, but all you really see are coats. And then he looks down and sees the dollhouse, which at this point is allowing light to go into the windows. So I'm hoping some light will go into the dollhouse. And then maybe we can see a little bit more. Here's our first glimpse of the dollhouse in the cupboard. The facade is really Georgian and I was wondering if it was a kit. I feel like I've seen a few dollhouses that look like this. So I did a little bit of research, basically just a Google search typing in Georgian style dollhouse to see what I could find. There were a few things that were close, but nothing that matched exactly. 
and the ones that seem to be the closest all turned out to be custom builds. So this is leading me to believe that perhaps this is a custom build that the prop department did and they had to make it custom because it had to fit inside of the cupboard. It's my belief from the pictures that the dollhouse in Doctor Who is 1 24th scale or smaller. The reason for this being, I found this house, which was custom built, it has the same amount of windows across the front. However, it is 1 12th scale and it is absolutely gigantic. It would probably be about the same size because it would have arches across the bottom instead of this lower level that's covered by bridge that they have going on there in the front. But you can see clearly there is a chair in the background so you see how huge this house is and when that's compared with a house that could easily be covered by just the bottom of a few coats you can see that this had to be a small house to fit inside this cupboard however if you recognize this house design or you've seen this kit somewhere else let me know in the comments down below okay <laughs> we just had a scene where the doctor and the dad kind of come together and realize that the dad really doesn't remember anything about George's birth. It was just, George is the kid, by the way. He doesn't really remember his birth and he starts getting confused. And then the little boy, George, he gets scared of the doctor and the dad and the cupboard starts lighting up and sucks them both in to the dollhouse. And the doctor had asked George who he is. So, um, Maybe he doesn't know who he is, or maybe he just got scared because he does know he's another life form and he's just kind of hiding. I'm not sure yet. As I said, I've watched this before, but I don't quite remember how it all goes. Back in the dollhouse, Rory just said, where are the lights? Why aren't there any lights? I miss lights. <laughs> and that makes me laugh because my Adams Family house had absolutely no electrical lighting on the inside. I had battery lights and then I had to emergency light it for the museum. But I do realize that if someone had been magically sucked into my Adams Family house, it would have been a very dark experience. However, I'm starting to put lights into my Beetlejuice project, and that would be a whole other story. As long as they found the switch. Why aren't there any lights? I miss lights. Rory and Amy finally run into the landlord, and a doll comes up behind the landlord, grabs the landlord, and he is all of a sudden changed into a wooden peg doll, and it's quite a creepy scene. And now Amy and Rory realize they definitely need to run. The doctor and the dad wake up in the dollhouse and we get another wonderful shot of that candelabra that I mentioned. It's actually on the dining room table and the table looks like it's set. I'm actually going to rewind and watch that again, see if I can catch any other details. Okay, it also looks like they have some pewter goblets, which I can see in a dollhouse. I think I've had some of those before and just some pretty plain plates and maybe some plastic fruit in a bowl. So pretty typical. I, I can totally see that in a dollhouse. The doctor just reached down to sniff a fake turkey and that was a really funny moment. It does look very plastic so I think he's about to figure it out. So the doctor's figured out it's the dollhouse, the dad is still really confused, and he's just, the doctor's picking stuff up off the table, and he's like, look, fake plates, forks, wooden chicken. <laughs> he's just throwing it all at him. Another detail that I just caught is there's quite a few empty shelves, well, at least one section of empty shelves, which I appreciate because I know how hard it is to make miniature books, and if you have a lot of shelves, most likely some of them will be empty. <laughs> They're still being chased by these dollhouse dolls and Rory just grabbed this big thing of thread. So it's like a big spool with thread wrapped around it. So it's kind of like a borrower's effect in reverse. So the borrowers are little people that collect big house items. But since they're in a dollhouse, it makes sense that somewhere there might be a life-size item like the glass eye that I referred to earlier in the dollhouse somewhere so it was a really good detail to add that little spool of thread that Rory uses to block the door. It's hard to say the name Rory. It's hard for me to say it at least. Rory just picked up an incredibly oversized mop which I also love. <laughs> 
Let me see if I have a mop. I used to have, like, I had all of these classic pieces and then they just ended up getting used in something. So just like this one. However, of course, theirs has a little bit more weight because it's real life size. It's hard to, you know, kind of fake this out of scale little floop that this yarn will do because it's so small. When Rory picks up this miniature mop that's actually oversized, it's going to have a lot of real life weight. So it weighs down like this, but another great detail. Unfortunately, Amy gets caught by one of the dolls and is now a wooden doll. And I think it's interesting that this candelabra that I've been referencing back to so many times is becoming an integral part of the plot. There are five candles on it and they keep going on and off five times, which correlates back to the real life world where the little boy George has to have the lights switched on five times. So the peg dolls are made of wood and the doctor just tried to like get them with his sonic screwdriver. <laughs> And he said, I really have to put in a setting for wood. It's embarrassing. That was funny. I enjoyed that line. I really enjoyed the humor mixed in with the scary parts of Doctor Who. That's what keeps me watching this show or kept me watching the first time I watched it. Um, a lot like the Addams Family, there can be some creepiness and some darkness. But as long as it's mixed with a little bit of comic relief, I really enjoy it. The doctor just picked up some large crafting scissors. So these are scissors that make like the little decorative edge on the edge of paper. And so he just hit the doll with it. So when all else fails, use crafting scissors. So the doctor finally figures out what kind of alien the little boy is. I can't quite remember the term he used, but basically like a cuckoo bird that kind of ends up in another bird's nest and they end up taking care of that bird. However, George is not even really aware that he is this alien or that he is doing any of this. He's trying to become the child he thinks they want. Finally, the doctor, Rory, and the dad are all trapped in the middle of the staircase and dolls are coming at them from all sides. The doctor pleads with George. He says, I can't save you from the monsters. You are the only one who can save yourself from the monsters. So the doctor is pleading with George from inside the dollhouse. He's yelling to try and get him to believe that he is safe in his own home. So finally, George opens the cabinet. Whew. I started crying, hold on. <laughs> finally, George gets up enough courage to open the cabinet and suddenly he appears inside the dollhouse. All the dolls stop going towards the three men and just kind of stop. And the doctor thinks it's over. However, the dolls turn around and start going towards George. The doctor realizes that the reason this is happening is because George is afraid that someone is going to take him away from his family. It's not just that he's afraid of the apartment building, but he's afraid that he's being rejected by his parents. The doctor tells the dad that in order to stop this and save George, you are going to have to let him know that he is safe and you want him. The dad struggles with it because now he knows his son is an alien, but ultimately as he sees the dolls approach his son, he runs to save him, which is really sweet. Hmm. Suddenly the cabinet fills with light and everything starts to fade, kind of giving us the idea that they're being transported out of the dollhouse at last. And I have to say that was a pretty impressive staircase. It's got a lot of detail and I would be happy to have that staircase in any of my dollhouses, except without the creepy peg dolls attacking me on it. Also, before we move on, I wanted to point out this really chunky cabinet in this really cool shot from when George is inside the dollhouse. A doll is coming towards him, but I just think this furniture is perfect for this scene. It's oversized, the handles are really chunky, and I think they did a great job with this, but you can see it contrasted with the details of underneath the staircase because that's a real life staircase and how delicate the details are. You can see the same cabinet here next to this real life-size door and you can just really see how huge this thing is so i thought i just thought it was really cool so i wanted to point it out everyone's returned back to normal and even the landlord wakes up on his apartment floor being licked awake by his dog who does seem happy to see him 
The mom comes home from her night shift to find a very happy little boy and his dad and the doctor in the kitchen and they seem to all be having a fun time getting breakfast ready. So that was the end of Night Terrors, the Doctor Who episode that takes place inside of a dollhouse. I was really happy to see all the details that were included that I really noticed as a dollhouse creator. The props and the scene were both really well done. The design of the dolls were really interesting and I do think that was a Doctor Who specific design. I haven't seen anything like that before. They definitely upped the creep factor. And it makes sense why that little boy might have been afraid of the dollhouse if that's what the dolls that came with the dollhouse look like. If you enjoyed this type of video, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any other dollhouses in pop culture, in movies, TV, that you would love me to react to, please let me know about that too. I have thought about watching and reacting to Hereditary, which is a movie about a woman who is a miniaturist. However, I know it's a really scary movie, so I'm going to have to kind of hype myself up for that. But I'm open to reviewing anything, if it's comedy, if it's, you know, maybe it'll be a video where it's a combination of different dollhouses seen in like sitcoms, I don't even know. But leave your ideas in the comments below, and I will be back with a video where I'm actually making something next time. I hope you all have an amazing week. Bye. Okay, I'll scoot carefully. The doctor's like, look, wooden chickens, look, fake, <laughs> fake plates, forks, wooden chicken. <laughs> I swear I'm gonna knock this dollhouse over. This background is like two feet behind me. I have like no space. I feel very YouTube-y though right now. It made it through. I did not knock it down, so I'm going to take it down before I knock it down. <laughs>